All right. Then good morning to the second day of EclipseCon, or third day, depends on how much time you spent here already. And let's have a session on the interesting topic of testing. Yay. Who of you likes to test? Hands up. Oh, almost everybody. Then you're in the wrong session. Then you're already, you know, you're already done. You already do a good job. Um, yeah, a session how to make enterprise testing a little bit more joyful, a little bit more effective, and what can we do about it. So my name is Sebastian, born and raised in Munich, Germany. And I work for this company called IBM, and I do a lot of things with enterprise Java and enterprise software in general, and also on testing. So that's a topic I think is very important and especially still somewhat underrepresented uh, in projects and what to do about it. And a few things that I want to show you, how to make it a little bit more effective, and especially what I want to focus on is um, an approach where you have, well, a more real-world project. Especially if you see some conference presentations or some um, articles and material out there, it's very easy to find some, well, examples on some test technology, test, test frameworks for an easy Hello World-like example. But from my experience, if you look into real-world projects, then it's somewhat different if you have a more complex project and especially more test scenarios and more test cases and how to keep them maintainable and how to make sure that once you know production code changes, you don't have to change 100 tests that don't compile anymore, right? Because that is the point where it's not that joyful. So for that reason, what I have for you is a project, and I like uh, coffee. So that is why I have a what is called coffee shop project, and one that is at least, I mean, it's still an example project, but at least complicated or complex enough. So we have already some, you know, uh, so, uh, some things to deal with. So we have a coffee shop application that has a database, so at least, you know, some persistence that we uh, will deal with uh, with the whole test um, thing that the user will um, use. So the user will go to the coffee shop to um, interact with it. And then we also have a backend that is called the barista, like the friendly person who makes your coffee. Um, and that communication is done in an asynchronous approach, just to make it a little bit more, well, complex if you want, um, because it's still a little bit more effort than doing that in a synchronous uh, fashion. And well, let's dive into the code immediately, because that's, I think, the most uh, interesting part. So what is that? That is the um, project for the coffee shop project. That is a Maven uh, project built with Jakarta, Jakarta E8, and um, packaged to a thin uh, war file approach and deployed to an application server. So I will use uh, Liberty. And just because I'm brave, I use Java 12, right? That's what all of you are using as well. 13, yes, even better. Exactly, you should use 13 now since three weeks, four weeks. Anyway, so this is what I'm using. The um, production code only has Jakarta as a dependency. That's a provided dependency. And that's about it. So that's the coffee shop um, project. And that is the application we want to focus on. So that is also the application that we want to test in, in multiple ways. All right, and then I can actually show you this locally already. So what I will do, I will just for the sake of the example for the demonstration, deploy all of that locally using Docker containers. That means I will have a Docker container for these two microservices, for the coffee shop, for the barista uh, system, and also for the database, right? So I'm running that um, already, and then what I can do, um, I can access it using, for example, the command line and curl or any you know, REST client. So what I will show you is just how to interact with the application and how to well, test it later on. So that's this port, localhost. And then we have an application that is called uh, Coffee Shop. And then I think it's called uh, Resources Orders. And then it says, well, no coffee orders in the system, right? So that is a JAX REST resource. That is a RESTful resource that the client would use in order to create some coffee. Let me show you that quickly on the code level. So this is now nothing for testing so far. That's just how the application works that we want to test later on, right? So that is a JAX REST resource for the coffee orders. So we will have something slash orders where we can you know, get some coffee, post some coffee using JSON, just because that's uh, what, we, uh, what we use here. 
And then what we would do in order to create a coffee order, we would post something uh, here, some um, JSON object, and that will then create some, some order which will be persisted in a database. So the order has a few properties, like a drink type, you know, espresso, cappuccino, what you want to order, things like that. It has an origin, the nice uh, coffee shop, you can sometimes select, you know, if you want to coffee beans from Ethiopia, from Colombia, from somewhere, whatever you prefer. And that is basically what we, uh, what we need here. And then what our application does, in this case, we will use a component, the coffee shop, that is our business component here, that in this case, well, just stores it to the database for now and then we continue later on. So we store it in the database, then we get a successful response, hopefully as a user, and that's it. And then in an asynchronous approach later on, that coffee will be sent to the barista that then updates the status and basically prepares your order, right? And in order to do that, let's see, we would need to post some JSON. So let's test this here, what you just saw in the code. It looks uh, something like this. We can post some application JSON to this uh, resource. Let's say we need a type, right? That might be an espresso, if you like, for example. And this origin. So I know there's an origin like Columbia in the system. And then hopefully I get, yes, a successful response to one created. And then I have a resource which I can access that will show me the order of, well, that coffee, um, the status of that coffee order. So it says, well, a type um, espresso, Colombia, and the status is already con collected because I was um, too slow. Immediately you would see there are different statuses, um, like it will be preparing and then it will be finished and then it will be collected because there's some communication going on between these microservices in an asynchronous way, right? Once that, is, uh, once that order has been created. So that is the point that we want to test later on. Okay, now when it comes to testing, I just tested my application somewhat in a manual way, right? I deployed it using the Docker, uh, Docker containers locally, but, but still. And then I can access it already using the command line, for example, in order to see whether the application is doing what I'm expecting, right? And if I use the proper backend, the barista backend, I can already see whether that um, communication flow works. But, well, that's probably not enough because now I just tested it manually, right? And testing something manually is, well, a good approach to verify it initially, but of course we want to have something in an automated way. So we want some automated tests. And in this case, what I wanna show you first is some system tests um, that it, uh, tests my application in a more end-to-end -end fashion. Very similar to what I just did on the command line. I tested my application from the outside, like a black box test, like connecting to it using the same way like a user would later on. But testing only the application, the application under test, while everything else might be mocked or simulated. Very similar to what you would do in a unit test. So for example, in a system test, what I would do, I use my coffee shop application in ideally the same way as it would run later on in production. So. That is easy here if I use Docker containers, I literally run the same Docker image locally. And I would connect it, in this case, not to the barista system, but to a mock, like a mock server, HTTP mocked server, similar to what you know mock heater would do on a code level. And it depends whether or not you want to mock the database, whatever is easier, or have an embedded database or a simulated one. But basically having a system test that then connects to your application and verifies whether it behaves correctly. And then what we will see later on, if we have the interaction with the barista backend, then you also might need to control or verify that the barista um, backend, well, first of all, responds correctly, like you would expect from that mock, and also verify whether the communication has been done correctly from the coffee shop application, right? Whether it calls the other microservice in the correct way. In order to do that, what I have here is a second project that is called Coffee Shop ST for system test, um, which I would say is a somewhat best practice or some approach to have a separate project to do that end-to-end -end testing from the outside. Why? Because then you don't accidentally reuse classes from the production 
um, a scope in order to prevent you know garbage in garbage out errors where you would change something on the production code already and then your test will not fail because um, you're reusing the same classes but in this case you want it to fail because otherwise you would change the contract and not verify it uh, and things like that and also you can use a different technology for your system test I mean it uses just HTTP right you can write them in bash scripts if you want in Python and something else I typically use the same technology because well the developers then are familiar with you know JUnit Java even Jack's REST client right so that's what I typically use so let's start with some type of system test we're testing now in an automated way what I just did in the command line and then now just call this end to end test whatever and I don't want to code this right now I just want to write in comments or in pseudocode what you know a basic out-of-the-box approach would be in order to system test what I just did and also what matches what I see in projects a lot and then we talk about maintainable tests and then we see some issues that we typically have okay so what I just did on a command line I wanted to test what do I want to test I want to create a coffee order right and I want to test whether that order is created correctly in the system so let's say something like this in order to create a coffee order what do I have to do well I have to HTTP post right something to blah 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 orders uh, syntax doesn't matter here it's just like pseudocode what I would write in Java code then right um, in order what do I have to post well that is the JSON of like type espresso I'm not warmed up in typing yet origin and the origin Colombia right and then the first verification is well whether that works so it means something like verify you know 201 created and well that means it's in the system that would already be a good response right that means a lot of things it means the application is up and running it means that was correct it means you know probably the database works and all of that because I could store it and then I also want to verify whether the information is correctly in the system right so I will access the system again what I did in the command line to say please give me the information for this order and see whether you know it matches all of the expected uh, information right in order to do that I will do an HTTP get right to well which resource well I got the resource if you paid attention before I got the URL on the HTTP location header right and that should be something like the order ID or whatever location right so store this here and in this case please HTTP get the order ID that location order slash whatever and now verify whether well espresso from Colombia right so something like this in pseudocode so that is how I at least typically see a lot of end-to-end -end tests a lot of system tests if you want right you've probably seen something like this similar right and then just in Java code so what I would do, uh, do is like write a Jax rest client or a spring rest template or plain HTTP client and now do the HTTP post for that resource the problem with that is it's not necessarily maintainable or a good idea why well let's do it this way what happens if tomorrow I implement a new feature and besides espresso I also support cappuccino right so what you do well of course you take the whole thing you copy paste right one thing is test espresso the other thing is test cappuccino and then you say oh what do you have to change well this one cappuccino and this one right okay then of course in the next day you support not only Colombia but also you know Ethiopia or a different uh, country and you know now you take everything and you see where this is going and that is even an easy change what happens if like the structure changes like that JSON structure for the communication or even better what happens if you swap HTTP for something else or you want to use gRPC or you know a different protocol well then basically that happens where testing is not that joyful because then you now have 200 of test cases that you wrote over the last months and years that you can throw away right maybe not the best approach okay what we should do instead and this should be not that surprising because on the production code we do that all the time we should introduce some proper code quality especially you know 
best practices and approaches like crafting proper abstraction layers, uh, separating the concerns, and introducing delegates by basically using the same means you would use in production code as well, right? Because what that test just did is, well, it does too many things. It has too many concerns, right? So rather than saying, well, we have one concern that is that test scenario, the abstract question, what do we want to test? We want to create a coffee order, right? And then we care about, well, HTTP, we have like JSON, we have the verification on the low level details, like, you know, status codes and all of that, all of that mixed into one method or one class. But what if we now separate that and actually create, you know, proper abstraction? So what is the correct abstraction to begin with? And this is the reason why I want to show you this writing in comments, or sometimes I do it even on paper. Start very simple on a very abstract way. What do you want to test? What is the test scenario here? Well, the test scenario is I want to create a coffee with espresso from Colombia, uh, and I want to verify whether it's in the system correctly, right? So write something like this, create coffee order, with espresso from Colombia. That's it. That is the abstraction level we're talking about. I don't care about HTTP, I don't care about JSON. As a user of the application, you know, you don't probably know what HTTP is or what JSON is. You know what a coffee order is and you care about espresso from Colombia, but how that works, well, doesn't matter at this stage. And then later on, say something like, you know, verify order in the system, you know, has espresso with Colum uh, with from Colombia, right? So in this case is, well, you would create it in that way, and then you say, you know, give me the order identification, whatever that means, and then verify whether that order with the identification has that information, right? So as a tester or as an engineer with that testing hat on, um, on you, you would write it in that abstract way. Now, how do you create a coffee order? Well, it doesn't matter at this point, right? What we would do typically, you would introduce a delegate that then, you know, does it in that way. And I have something prepared for you. Very similar thing that I hear, uh, call create order test that now does exactly this. So that method tests what I just wrote in comments. Let's start here. What you do, you create a new order with, well, espresso from Colombia. You know, very basic on that way, Espresso, Colombia. And then you say, coffee order system, some delegate, whatever that is, create order. That's it. You don't talk about HTTP, you don't talk about status codes, no, create order. What you get back is a identification that happens to be a URI. And then later on say, okay, now coffee order system, please get me the order for this identifier. And then, well, assert whether that's equal to what I just had before, like the type matches, origin matches, and if you want, you can assert that, you know, now the size is of all coffee orders increased and things like that, but that's it. That is the abstract level that you want to test. And how it is implemented, well, if you care, then, again, delegation, um, abstraction layers, what the same thing that you would do in production code, that is delegated to this, well, delegate to this class. And it's super easy, you know, that's a simple Java class, nothing fancy. That's not forbidden in test code. That's actually a good idea, right, to refactor, to create these delegates, to delegate whatever you want to implement, and that you see, you know, it still uses JAXRS on the client side, says, please connect to this URL, you can configure it, and blah, blah. And if you want to, well, what does it mean, create an order? If you want to create an order, then you say, okay, now I actually send a request to whatever, this uh, using this JSON and then HTTP post to that target and so on and so forth. And you already can verify on low level details, like what does it mean if I, um, I am successful, that means I have a you know, successful HTTP status and things like that. You can verify the JSON response on that abstraction la uh, layer, on that low level layer. Everything else is done in that test, right? Now, if you think about it, that is much more maintainable. Because if you now introduce a thing like, you know, not only espresso, but cappuccino, well, then you don't have to copy 100 lines of code, but it's just, you know, small. You can see the details because it's obvious, it's readable, it's right there. 
the details of your test scenario is not buried in you know 200 lines of code. It's like just what you want to have, like espresso, Colombia, create order. That's easy and that's understandable for domain focused people, right? Even if you're not an engineer, even if you don't know what HTTP is. Now, if the lower level details change, if you swap HTTP for something else, if you swap JSON, if you change the structure, well, then you change it right here. And you don't have to change it in 100 methods because it's a reusable component that you, you just use. And if you have to change how you create an order, you do it right here and you don't affect all of the other test scenarios. All right. So let's run this. I now want to run my um, test environment. I still use Docker containers for that, so I run my well coffee shop application. I run a database and I run the barista system, but not a barista system, but a mock server. I will talk about the barista in a second. Let me start uh, start this up. Docker prepare. Um, because what I will do now that is the easy test to create a coffee order, right, and see whether it's in the system. The more sophisticated test is where the other system comes into play, where I say, okay, actually what happens if my application now talks to the barista system? Is this communication done correctly? Right, that's the second test that I want to verify here. Um, run Liberty. And I can show you that in a second. So basically what I want to test, that was the easy test. We can run this in a second. And now the more sophisticated one is to see, okay, actually if I want to, um, test and verify that more sophisticated workflow um, of that example, what happens if I create a coffee order and then this order is being sent back and forth to the barista system, whether that works correctly. Well, to answer that, same story. What you would introduce is a um, more abstract component that implements barista system, how you would interact with the barista system, right? So the barista system in this case is a mock uses mock server that you know accepts any HTTP responses that you want to um, send it. And then what you would do is to say, hey, dear mock server, the same that you would do in a code level in the unit test, now you're going to have a request response that looks like this. And if you get that res uh, request, please respond you know, accordingly. Please send the um, correct uh, response depending on the request that you get. And in this case, what I will have, well, if I create a coffee order, then I know that I'm going to send you know, this order to the barista system, and then I want the barista system to respond with the correct status and the correct response, right? So what I will do, same story, I create a coffee order, and then I tell the barista system, hey, barista, please answer for this order accordingly with the correct status. So you will soon will get the information for that order. And now please say that the status is, you know, preparing. Okay. Then what we uh, do again, we go to the coffee order, see whether the information is correct. And now what we do, well, we wait for that communication to happen. We now want to verify whether that communication is correct with the barista system. Now, since that communication is asynchronous, we cannot do it right away because we don't know whether that already happened, right? So what we have to do, wait for process and get, well, we basically have to say, wait for invocation. We have to wait for it, right? It's asynchronous. We cannot guarantee that it's already happened. So the best thing we can do is just wait with a timeout and say, we think we know it should happen within that um, time period. Um, so fail if not, and once that is the case, then you know, get the new information and now verify whether it's now preparing, whether you updated that status. So now go to the coffee shop again and see whether that information has been updated, right? And then actually the same thing again, because we have multiple status transitions, and check whether now it's been finished. So then you tell the barista system, hey, you will be invoked again, and now this time please respond differently with that status. And then we go and wait again and see whether that has been updated in the coffee shop database as well. Make sense? Okay, let's see. So now what I will have, I have my application deployed in a slightly different way. That means I now run a mock server for the barista for my system. I can show you. Docker now have the same thing, a coffee shop and a Postgres. And now the barista runs actually Wiremock. So that is the barista one that runs my Wiremock server instead of the actual barista because I don't care whether the actual barista works. That is not part of my test. And let's run this example first. 
what I run here in my system test, this is just a plain test from a you know HTTP client perspective. So the test runs quickly, runs very quickly. I don't have to wait for a test lifecycle for something to start up, right? Like a simulated environment, because the application already runs. I will talk about test life cycles in a second, but that no, okay, works. It just connects to the application. I can test it again, and it will create a proper coffee order. Actually, I can verify that orders. Whether that is no this, that is in the system, and I see. Oh yeah, it just created two coffee orders. The the ones from before are gone because I restarted the application. So that is the one uh, that I just created. This two tests that are, we're running. And now, test the other one. So that is the second test that actually creates an order. Now talks to the barista, waits for the status to transition, waits for the next status to transition, and yeah, green, works as well. Now this test takes a little bit longer, but that's not the fault of the test. That's actually part of the business use case, right? because the application will just take a while to send that asynchronous uh, message. So you will create it, and then you know after two seconds or so, it will be sent, and then you have to wait, and then it will be sent again So to, to wait for that status to happen. But again, it should run fast. So that is at least fast enough to wait for it, and then we know, I can run it again, then we know that our system tests work, right? Now, the second thing that I want to show you, and which I think is really, really cool, um, that's why I use um, Open Liberty for my application. For this very test, test passed, I'm actually not running um, the same Docker container in the same way like I would run in production, but what I would do, I run um, Liberty with a Maven plugin with the Liberty dev mode, development mode. So that is, I'm typically not the biggest fan of Maven plugins. Uh, um, I think there's a somewhat over usage. Um, we can talk about that as well. Uh, of Maven, but I'm a big fan of that one to run my application server. Why? It comes with a very cool killer feature of having a hot, a deep, hot redeploy mode where your application server is running, where it can actually swap something on your production code and it's changed immediately without, you know, rebuilding the Docker image, restarting the Docker container, waiting 20 seconds or so until you get the full turnaround, until you can test again, right? In that end-to-end -end fashion. But what I can do instead, let me show you one resource here. That is the base resource in a hypermedia um, type fashion of a root resource, what is called here, root resource. Now, if I change something here in that response, for example, say, hello, EclipseCon. You see, I cannot type in this morning. Then what it does, it immediately changes the application and there it is, changes the JSON resource right away. So I don't have to wait. I don't have to wait for you know server restart and things like that. It's there immediately. It's you know super fast, can restart my application and you know, depending on the load, uh, typically less than a second, and I can just re-execute, you know, for example, my manual test, refresh the browser, or, of course, rerun, where's my test? Rerun my tests, right? Immediately. So the point is, you want to optimize your development workflow in terms of that you get, you know, that nice flow experience of staying in that development flow. You change something on the production code, you want to test it immediately. You don't want to wait 20 seconds because in 20 seconds we are humans, we are distracted. You know, you check your smartphone, you look at Facebook, and then, you know, you're gone. You're out of that flow. But you want to uh, change the code, immediately see the changes reflected, rerun your tests, I can do it again, rerun your tests and also rerun it in an end-to-end -end fashion, right? It's not just a unit test. It verifies the application with the same way like your users would, you know, your users would use it with the JSON mapping, with the correct HTTP status and things like that. And that is just important to have, right? And that's also why I'm a big fan of this, uh, of this approach and specifically this uh, plugin that just enables to do that very quickly locally, right? And well, talking about test life cycles, that's actually also the reason why I typically tend to use a test technology in a very basic way by not having any you know, specific test runners or anything else. That is just JUnit tests. Why? Well, 
JUnit is widely used for the system test, it actually doesn't matter. I could use a main method or whatever, right? But in this case, it's just easy to set up and it runs quickly. JUnit runs very, very fast. If you just do the plain JUnit approach, you can run hundreds of tests in you know, less than a second. It's really, um, really effective to use. Now, that is to be said about end-to-end -end tests. Um, a few more things on code level uh, tests. So what, um, what I see a lot is like, the terms are a little bit overused. I call them integration tests, code level integration tests that typically fire up an um, simulated or embedded environment, same like you would have with spring tests, spring context test, or a Killian test, uh, or a CDI unit, anything that includes the test lifecycle to start something up um, to have a you know, simulated environment. Now, the challenge with that is that typically they take a lot of time. Not a single test per se, because it runs, you know, in two, three, four, five seconds. But now, again, talking about a real-world project, you have more and more of these tests. You have to write a new test. You see what your coworker did. You copy-paste their test, pu uh, put in your details, and then you end up with 100 of these tests that take two seconds each. And that is why you end up with, you know, Maven builds that just take way too long. Now, the challenge with that is they, you know, take a long time to execute. And also, if you have a simulated test, they don't have the full, you know, coverage. They cannot always cover everything because it's just a simulated environment. You don't run the same stuff that you would run in production. Um, but still, you might want to define a test where you get faster feedback, right? Whether you want to see whether you, you know, did all of that wiring correctly um, without deploying it immediately. What I came up with um, that in my book I called, I think, component tests, but I think a better name yet is uh, what I call use case tests. Basically, what you want to have end-to-end -end tests, or not, um, code level unit tests, um, sorry, use case tests that verify the you know, use case that you want to have with multiple components involved, not just one class, but you know, multiple things that uh, where you test some integration already, but without starting um, an application server or a simulated environment all the time. So basically what I do, and this is now a very much the same story um, what I had on the maintainable test uh, front, you want to include um, reusable components that in this case wire up everything, well, manually, but using what I call your test doubles that actually extend the main scope, the production scope, to include, well, wiring of mocks and wiring of the components in general, right? It's because typically what you have to do, let's have a look at one of these components, you have to set up a lot of mocking and, you know, like other components and dependence that you, uh, dependencies that you would use, right? So you say, okay, please verify this and that, and now when, then this, and so on and so forth. And now what you know from most test cases, if you put everything like that in that test case, in the test class itself, well, this is where you end up with not maintainable tests as well, right? Because then you have hundreds of these tests that include all of the wiring. But what happens if you get a refactoring change in production, right? You change how, in this case, the coffee shop uses this order processor class and things like that. And then, you know, you end up with compile errors in 200 test, class, test cases. So in this case, what you would do, you would include, um, include reusable components to, well, basically wire up everything um, here in these test doubles, and then your actual test cases, well, again, are easy to define because you have these reusable components, right? So your use case test, again, code level, looks something like this, right? Create order and then verify create order. The second a method has been added on the test scope in order to, well, define that. So we can run this as well. And that is just one example, quite quickly, how to make your code level tests a little bit maintainable and still run fast, right? That runs very quickly because it doesn't set up an embedded environment. So just as some key takeaways, what I really care about. First of all, the test code quality, it matters. It's not forbidden to care about that. It's actually a good idea to you know, refactor your code, to introduce reusable components, to care about mostly uh, proper abstraction layers and, you know, delegation. And it's very important to have, you know, effective, uh, to have an effective test suite to care about fast feedback and that the turnaround cycles are short. And 
from my experience, it's very helpful to separate the test life cycles, to not have a test class that tries to set up everything, because typically then it's harder to separate, you know, what you what you would like to reuse. So for example, if you have a test class that wants to set up like containers or that wants to set up that embedded environment, then you know it's harder to say, okay, now I have a second test class and now I want the first test class to set it up and then keep it running so the second can reuse it. I would say you can do that if you, you know, want to do it on a Java code level, but from, uh, from my um, experience, it's just easier to define shell scripts like I did to say, okay, please Docker run if you want to use Docker or to use Docker Compose, uh, things like that, to set up that test, um, um, test environment and then have to test the actual test scenarios defined separately that then just can run very, very quickly. So I think that just helps. Um, then it helps to craft reusable test scenarios that is actually also possible if you separate the life cycles. So for example, if I have my system test here, then I can just reuse the same system test to test against an actual environment, right? If in the next step I deploy to Kubernetes and say, okay, great, I already have that end-to-end -end test, just um, you know, use a different URL and refire it against that one. And also what I said before, I think it's just much more important to care about a proper test called quality rather than the test framework, right? Things like Spark testing, Scala test, uh, Cucumber, I sometimes use that. If you care about these you know, test frameworks, if you think it makes you more productive, you can use that, right? But from ex uh, experience, for a more complex project, it's like a small, tiny improvement over the improvement that you get if you care about proper test code quality and you know, care, care about crafting these proper components. And by doing that, I think, Testing can become very effective, very quick to use, and it can also become more joyful. I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much for your attention.